Hi guys, welcome to the first video in Unit 8. This video is going to be based out of Chapter 17, which is Additional Aspects of Equilibrium. So in this chapter, we're going to extend the learning from Chapters 15 and 16 by examining further applications of acid-base equilibrium and solubility equilibrium. Now, with this chapter, this is known to be one of the most complex problem-solving chapters in all of AP Chem. So um, it's very problem solving based. So completing um, prior reading or watching videos, that's going to be essential for your success this chapter. Um, it's also going to help to take your time, write down everything that you know about a problem, and show all of your work. So the first three sections are actually going to be acid-base equilibrium, but this video, so just this one video, we're just going to focus on 17.1. So we're just going to be focusing on the common ion effect. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start by looking at a scenario. So let's say that we have acetic acid, which is a weak acid, and we have sodium acetate. So we have acetic acid, notice this double arrow, okay, because since it's a weak acid, it exists at equilibrium. It only partially ionizes in water. But then we also have sodium acetate. Notice sodium acetate, we have this single arrow, okay, and that's because sodium acetate is a salt. Okay? It's a strong electrolyte, so it dissociates into its ions. Now, the presence of acetate from sodium acetate means that we are adding more of this acetate ion to this equilibrium. So if we have too much acetate, Le Chatelier's principle says that equilibrium is going to shift to the left. We're going to be using up this excess acetate. We're going to be making more acetic acid, which means your H plus concentration is going to be going down and it's going to affect the pH. So as we look at this common ion effect, we're actually going to be utilizing Le Chatelier's principle um, to look and see which way equilibrium will actually shift. So like I said on the last slide, let's consider the ionization of acetic acid, which is this weak acid. It is very, very important that you notice if something is a double arrow or a single arrow. That tells us if we're at equilibrium. And Le Chatelier's principle, again, we're going to be focusing on adding this common ion. So notice we have acetate in acetic acid. We have acetate in the sodium acetate salt. That is the common ion. And like I said on the last slide, this actually reduces the H plus because when we have too much acetate and okay, we have too much of this acetate it's going to push equilibrium to the left it's going to use up these products we're using it up we're forming more acetic acid so what that means is we're using up this H plus that's going to reduce this concentration and therefore because we have less H plus okay, it's less acidic and it's going to raise the pH this is called the common ion effect now these common ion equilibrium problems they're solved the exact same way that we've been solving other equilibrium problems using ice tables except the initial concentration of the common ion is not zero. So before, when we looked at a problem like this equilibrium uh, reaction at the top, we had some acetic acid to start, but we didn't have any ions. Now that's the only difference that's, the only thing that is different about these common ion problems. Now keep in mind, Ka and Kb, those do not change. Those are constants, but your concentrations of reactants and products, those can change. So the common ion effect says that whenever a weak electrolyte, which is a weak acid or a weak base, and a strong electrolyte, which is a salt or maybe a strong acid or a strong base, when those contain a common ion, when they're together in solution, the weak electrolyte ionizes less than it would if it were alone. So if we look back at this acetic acid, because Le Chatelier's principle actually pushes it to the left and we form more acetic acid, this actually means that when there's a common ion, acetic acid is not going to ionize as much, right? You're going to have more acetic acid than you would if you did not have that common ion. This affects acid-base equilibrium, and we're going to see later in this chapter how it affects solubility. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example, and this is actually um, an example exercise in your book, so if you need more step-by-step, -step, feel free to look at it in your book. So this problem says, what is the pH of a solution made by adding 0 0.30 moles of acetic acid and 0 0.30 moles of sodium acetate? So it just so happens that these are the same substances that we were looking at in the example, but that's okay. And we're adding those in enough water to make one liter of solution. Now that's important because in order to put something into an ice table, we need molarity. Now because this is one liter, 
That's going to make our molarity calculations easy. Now what we're asked to determine is the pH of a solution that has a weak electrolyte and a strong electrolyte, and they share a common ion. In any of these problems, um, we need to essentially go through a series of steps in order to help us. So first we need to consider the strong electrolyte and the weak electrolyte. So if we take a look at this, we have acetic acid. Is that a strong or a weak acid? Okay, that's a weak acid. So I'm going to put WA. It's a weak acid, therefore meaning it's a weak electrolyte. That means we're going to have equilibrium. We're going to have a double arrow. Okay, this is going to be our equilibrium expression. And then we have sodium acetate. Sodium plus a polyatomic, that's a salt. Okay, a salt means it's a strong electrolyte. It dissociates completely, which means in solution now, we actually have acetic acid. Okay, we have have H plus, we have acetate, we also have sodium ions, but why don't we show the sodium ions? And so then what is the common ion in this? Common ion is acetate. So this is going to be our common ion. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure we have an equilibrium equation for the weak electrolyte. That's our equilibrium okay, for the weak electrolyte. So here's acetic acid. Then what we need to do is we need to write the equilibrium expression and we need to find the Ka value using appendix D. So how would we write the equilibrium expression and what would be the K? Well, because we're dealing with weak acid, we're going to be dealing with Ka. We have products over reactants, so H plus acetate ion over the acetic acid concentration. And if you look in appendix D, you find it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Then we're going to set up the ice table and we're going to fill it in with the appropriate values. So we have the initial concentration of the acid and we're going to have an initial concentration of the ion that they have in common that's from the salt. So here we have initial concentrations. So we have 0.3 for the acid, 0.3 for the acetate ion. Notice it's still minus x for the acid and plus x for the ions. And we're still ionizing some of the acid and making some of the ions. And then we work our way down. So 0.3 minus x, x, and now we have 0.3 plus x. Notice this down here, this is the difference. And then what we want to do is we want to plug in the equilibrium values and we want to solve for x. And think about what x represents when you solve for it. Think about what the problem asked you for. So we have 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. This was the Ka. Okay, so right here, this is our Ka. We have all of the equilibrium concentrations from our ice table. Now notice we have multiple uh, x's. We have plus x, we have minus x, and we just have an x. Assuming that adding or subtracting x from 0.3 is not going to change it, if we make that assumption, we get this simplified version down here. Now, what this entire thing is saying is assume x is small. And I'm going to write that right now. Assume x is small. Because when we make that assumption that x is small, we can ignore it. So then we get 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x times 0.3 divided by 0.3. Okay? And then if we solve for x, we find that the concentration of H plus, which is equal to x, is actually equal to Ka, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. But the problem does not just say find H plus. It says find pH. So therefore, pH is equal to the negative log of H plus, which is 4.74. So this 4.74, this is our answer. Now if you actually were to calculate the pH without the common ion, you would actually find that it is going to be more acidic. So it should have a lower pH. But remember, when you add a common ion, it reduces the H plus concentration, so it actually raises the pH. Because the acetic acid is not going to ionize as much when you have a common ion. That is probably the most important um, statement from this entire video, is that when you have a common ion, the weak acid or the weak base will not ionize as much. Okay, so it's not going to ionize as much, which is going to, in the case of a weak acid, reduce the amount of H plus, and therefore raise the pH. Now, if you still have some questions on the common ion effect, uh, bring the questions to class, read 17.1 in your book, and then we're going to do some more practice problems, some more examples in class.